everyone. Welcome back to Therapy Talk. Um, in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about listening. Uh, sometimes people uh, take that for granted. So uh, I really, we're trying to help our counselors in training here really get a grasp of what are the different dimensions of listening and the levels of listening. And I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, it's really difficult for uh, a new therapist coming in to decide uh, what I need to pay attention to. Um, I've often said that, you know, Adler says something about summarization where at the end of the session you should uh, give back to the client a number of the uh, important themes and ideas and concepts and even word for word some of the things that clients say so that they really are demonstrating that they're tracking with the client, they're really listening, they're really attending and being there for the client. On the other hand, we encourage this acceptance and respect of the client to explore these issues. And on the other hand, uh, we have to control the session to a certain extent as, as therapists in order to really focus on the goals. I mean, you can't let a client kind of say, uh, talk for 50 minutes in the hour and at the end that you've just been passively listening because you're not doing your job. So let me give you some ideas about listening. Now, this first concept is listening for content. Uh, it's important that to note that you can't track and remember every single thing that a client says. Uh, people often ask about taking notes in a session and I say yes, it probably in the beginning sessions you can take notes to a certain extent but you want to keep those brief, help you remember what the client says but you can't write down every word. It's really going to interfere with you, uh, eye contact and nonverbal behavior and all of those getting to know each other and, and joining uh, in a therapeutic uh, relationship. But I think what you, one guideline is that I say to, this, to students coming in our program is um, if, uh, if you're going to say something to the client, what it, is that thing, that, that statement you're going to make, is it helpful to the client at this time? So keep that in mind. But here's the notion on listening. What does the client mainly need me to understand? This notion of what are the important ideas and topics of the client? You have to keep this guideline in front. Now, it'll mean that it will mean that there's some questions that are not wasted on trivia and some other things that will help you, uh, that will keep you, uh, that will get you off track. And uh, so, by doing that, now we've talked about listening for content. Let's also listen for feelings. Uh, you're listening to the nuances of feelings in here. Uh, some people have talked about entering the emotional field of the client. This ability to really be okay with feelings that the clients present, whether they're sad and frustrated and mad and angry or crying and or despondent and so forth. You really have to, and certain people said this, you really have to earn the right to intervene. Um, you've got to influence the client and make your ability heard by the client. So you have to first listen and be there of all the smaller nuances of what the client is presenting. The other question is, can you really tolerate uh, the feelings of others and the intensity that that may bring about in the session? Now, another idea, and I mentioned this earlier in our, as we opened here, is the notion of listening for themes. Now, themes come in different uh, forms, but really there are assumptions about how we operate in the world. For example, there's three of these notions of under th uh, subparts of themes and listening for themes. You really have to understand that uh, how th what how themes are really create uh, connected to excuse me uh, to how a person regards themselves. They're asking the question about themselves and how they operate in the world. Is this what I now want to do? Is this? So it's really kind of focused on the self. They're under that theme, I think, come, uh, or under the subcategory also is the idea of listening for themes regarding others. You know, can I really trust other people? How do I deal with other people in my relationships? So first is a the theme about the self. Second is a the theme about others. And then uh, end of that is also about trust. I mentioned that. And the notion that there are also themes regarding life. What can I get out of life? How can I set goals? Can I achieve what I uh, attempt to achieve? What are my values and my dreams and, and other kinds of things? Now, in summary, this notion of listening, this idea of listening for content, listening for feelings, and listening for themes, and the three that we just talked about, are really therapeutic listening approaches that allow us to connect with our clients that we are uh, 
uh, responsible for helping. So therapists really need to be able to offer not only an objective analysis of what's going on and their style and give them feedback, but also this emotional availability by listening to these issues and reflecting back and helping a person. I mean, remember I said at the very beginning of this, you actually have to set limits in a session and make sure that the client is not just talking all the time and you're sitting there passively, but you have to really listen for these themes and that will help you begin to question and, and move toward the goals that you're set, uh, set out to, uh, to accomplish. Uh, this becomes a real awareness of what's happening in the moment to moment occurrences in the therapy session. As a general guideline, the more fully the client feels understood, the more influence and help you can be as a therapist. Hey, thank you for listening today. This has been Therapy Talk. I'm Michael Baltimore. Uh, I'll see you again next time.